Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You, a podcast and podcast show that brings you leadership lessons, non- knowledge, experience, and wisdom from thousands of successful individuals from around the world. I'm your host, Ashutosh Garg, and today I'm delighted to welcome a very, very senior and accomplished professional academic from Melbourne, Australia, Mr. Ross Monaghan. Ross, welcome to the show. Hi, Ashutosh. It's great to be part of this amazing series of interviews. I'm, I'm honoured. I'm really looking forward to the chat. Thank you. Ross is a lecturer at Deakin University. He consults in the field of communication, artificial intelligence, social media, and emergency communication. And he's the former chief executive officer of the Australian Mobile Telecommunications Association. So, Ross, before we talk about communications and AI, tell me a little bit about your own journey. <laughs> yeah. Um, look, I, I I see myself as a professional communicator, um, a leader as well, and now a, a, a teacher and mentor. Mm-hmm. Um, but I came into all of that kind of by accident. Um, back in the day um, when I was in high school, which was a long time ago, mm-hmm. um, a friend mentioned about uh, a local junior junior council that my town was setting up. And while she didn't get on that council, I did. Um, and that sort of set the course of my life because mm-hmm. I, I mentioned that I was sort of interested in communication and, and photography and those sort of things. And the mayor of the town who was looking after that group said, well, Ross, you should be the junior council's mm-hmm. PR representative. And I had no idea what mm. public relations was. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. pretty well known now. Um, but she took me to the local newspaper and um, being a um, a young Aussie who lived by the beach, I needed a new surfboard. And, and so when she took me to meet the editor, I mm-hmm. cheekily said, and this sort of was, you know, a lesson through for me throughout mm-hmm. life as well. Mm-hmm. I took the opportunity and said, hey, do you need anyone to work for you? Because mm-hmm. I needed a surfboard. And he said, my copy boy has just mm. um, Amazing. resigned. Okay. Would you like mm. to be the copy boy? Mm. So I became a journalist. Um, I worked as a cadet journalist, but then did a degree in professional communication. Mm. And again, picking up on that theme of grasping any opportunities mm. you have, I called um, BHP at the end of my second year at mm. university and BHP, one of the world's biggest Correct. mining companies, of yep. course, um, India's got, got Adani, of, of course, mm. called them and they said, well, yeah, look, come in and, and work for us. And I worked for them until I was about 30. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I was headhunted by a big startup mobile phone company in Australia called Optus. Um, yep. do, dealing with community relations, mm-hmm. did quite well there, became the head of the mobile phone industry association and then had a family. And look, I I, I decided that, you know, I wanted to devote my time to things that I wanted to do, which included mm-hmm. my family mm-hmm. um, and give back and help others through through teaching. Um and, and so I became an academic after all of that. And and um I Look, I've had an amazing career, amazing. A, a really great journey. Um, and uh, look, I, and as an academic now, I really love seeing mm. similar sort of amazing journeys mm. with my students as Fascinating. well. Fascinating. Fascinating. Thank you for sharing your own journey. So let's talk a little bit about communication. Mm. You know, I think it's it's a much uh, misunderstood term. Mm-hmm. Um, so let me start by asking you, why do you believe effective communication is so important? Yeah, it's a really good question. There's two parts to that. I think, you know, everything starts and, and ends with communication, right? Okay. So in our personal relationships, mm. but also in business. So as a professional communicator, mm. um, I like to help organizations think about what they are trying to achieve mm-hmm. and then thinking about how communication can help them achieve what they want to achieve. Mm. Now, importantly, as a public relations practitioner, I recognize that a lot of people see PR as spin or just one way form of communication, promoting something. Look, I can tell you the professional communicators Mm. are out there listening to communities. They're listening to their target publics or their stakeholders and helping their organizations 
actually be the organisations that society, governments and communities mm. want them to be. Um, and I think that that's really important. So um, measurement of communication is really important. Understanding the business need or the organisational need for communication mm. is vitally important. And look, if you if you get involved in that, you get involved in every aspect mm. of an organisation's operations. Um, mm. Because if you if you hear from the community that they're not happy with one aspect of what you're doing, mm. you go back to the organisation and say, "Well, look, community, whether or government or regulators or investors aren't happy with this, can we change direction mm. so that we address what?" their concerns are or do we need to go back and explain why we can't do that mm. um, and that gives you a lot of power within organization right. and look as a professional career it's also very very rewarding well said and uh, you know based on all the work that you do what are some of the basic challenges <laughs> a lot of us face in communication yeah, look, oh, the, the, where to start? I mean, look, I mean, if I had to pick one, mm. I think it's listening. Mm. <laughs> Correct. You know, somebody told me that um, you said we, we've got two ears and one mouth and we should use um, them Listen in more. that proportion. Correct. Listen twice as much as we talk and, and look that's really stood me in good stead mm. so I think you know if, if I had one pitch to anyone to help you improve your communication mm -hmm. don't think that communication is you just spouting out ideas or your thoughts on you know listen to people communication mm. is the sharing of meaning correct just transmission of the message mm. is not communication that's just sending a message. The real true communication when is when you understand and you are understood as well. So having that empathy is is really, really important. Thank you. The next question that I have is, you know, that there is a lot of new technology that's now coming into communication. Mm. And I will talk about uh, this also when we speak about artificial intelligence. Mm. But from... I remember four decades ago as a young marketing person, communication was all about putting up from a marketing perspective, big billboards, full page advertise, and, you know, advertisements and so on. Today, everything is on a small little hand handheld device. <laughs> My question is, and this is especially because you are so fond of technology, how is technology changing communication? Oh, look, in so, so many ways. And I think we've only started the journey to... Um, new ways of communicating and I'm not necessarily saying that's good or bad it's just that the the, the changes are, are, are there um, thinking back to my early days as a professional communicator as a journalist I, I used manual typewriters correct you know put put in a piece of paper and yep. manually typed mm -hmm. um, to be able to now look at um, a computer screen and see what thousands of people are saying, millions of people potentially um, being able to communicate with them and engage quickly just reinforces how much mm. change has come. But I think with that um, has come lots of opportunities for us individually to reach mm. out to people right around the world as we're doing now i mean Correct. with yeah. without this technology we would never have met and we would never have had this amazing conversation Absolutely. so there are lots of opportunities that mm. had is cre created mm. there are certainly challenges but i think also and and this is a passion of mine that you know we have some responsibility as well when we're using these platforms to learn about the power of communication mm. to learn about the power of communications technology and AI and social media. And, you know, maybe individually we can't make too much of mm. a change in the world, but collectively if we all take up that responsibility and do mm. what we can, mm. then there will be some change. So, you know, look, so many changes, um, but I would put it back to individuals. Look, governments have a role as well to play in regulating Organisations have a role to play in helping um, uh, everyone use the technology efficiently and effectively. Mm -hmm. The media has a really important role to play. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, what can I change as an individual? I can change my behavior on online and when I communicate and I would put that back to everyone else to try to be a responsible human and a responsible communicator. Well said. And yet, Ross, when you look at today's communication platform, which is predominantly social media, mm. uh, which is moving at the speed of nanoseconds, and everyone seems to be wanting to put out their message on social media. Yeah. How does one ensure that one's message is uh, heard in this incredible yeah. din of <laughs> loud communication taking place uh, on, on, on every device? Yeah, look, well, my first tip would be to think about how or who you're communicating with. Mm. There was somebody I met not so long ago and, and he looked at me when we were talking about blogging and, mm. and he said to me, I have the most successful blog in the world. Mm. And I, I think you could see that I was a bit taken aback by that. Mm -hmm. and, and he said, yeah, three people read my blog. Wow. <laughs> and, and I was, I was even more confused. And he mm. said, look, Ross, you know, my family and I traveled around Australia and I wanted my mum, my dad and my sister to keep up to date with our journey. I decided to write a blog about that. And all three of them, my mum, my dad, my sister, mm. all read the blog. It could not have been more successful. Mm. And I look, I think to, to me, I think that that is a great explanation yeah, of so, what public yeah. relations is. Mm -hmm. Thinking about who you need to communicate. Correct. The number of likes you have for an Instagram post or a TikTok post. Does it really matter mm. for you as an individual? Sometimes it might if the message you're getting out there is is relevant to those people. But so often with a lot of these platforms, if you're not paying for them, you are actually the product. Mm. And what these platforms are doing is using us to help um, sell advertising, which mm. is a huge, huge business. I mean, it's, Correct. you know well over 200 billion dollars globally around the world each mm. year well well in excess of that so um there is a lot of emphasis by these platforms to to make us think that reaching more people is better mm -hmm. um and look you know it gives you a bit of a buzz i guess but at the end of the day what are you trying to communicate mm. and who are you trying to communicate with is, is what i would actually get people to start to think mm. about so if it's people in um, regional Victoria here in Australia that I wanted to communicate with, then how do I reach them? Reach out mm. personally or, or rather than advertising around the world on a global platform. Mm. Think about who you want to communicate with is really mm. important. Fascinating. So one more question on communication before we move to the next topic. Mm. Uh, and this is about culture. And, you know, before we started speaking, you were telling me about how many different yeah. Uh, students you have in your class from how many different countries uh, speaking as an Indian I've often heard from Indians that let my work do its talking <laughs> why do I have to uh, communicate anything about what I am doing when I speak to American friends they say you've got to listen to what I am doing I want to understand how does culture impact communications yeah, really, really good question. And look, it's fascinating um, talking to my students about mm. um, media and communication around the world. In my mm. postgraduate class on risk and and um, and reputation management this week, we had a, a really interesting conversation about media, me, traditional media in, in mm -hmm. different countries. So um, whilst culture has an impact on us personally, even the media within different cultures is really different and gets okay. us to, to think about different things. So, you know, at university, we talk about um, things like agenda setting theory, where the media might not necessarily tell us what to think, but they'll mm -hmm. tell us what to think about. And that has a really important impact on people around the world the world mm. and governments are having influence on that. Mm. Um, but, you know, cultural communication around the world is, you know, it's fascinating, the differences. Um, and I think it's, you know, whilst we haven't got time to go into it all today, I think it's important to understand that there are significant differences in communication and cultural norms around the world. 
how do you address those? Well, look, I think getting back to my comment before asking, if you're not sure if you need to go into a new market or a new group of people that you're talking to, um, ask questions about that. Um, find, you know, make sure that you take these things into account. Listen to feedback on your work. Ask b- before you leap into these things. Um, I'm sure it will not only be really interesting to learn mm. about different cultures, mm. but you'll learn a lot more as well and you'll be a much better, more effective communicator as well. So listening, understanding, accepting, and and, I, and and also I think, you know, striving for equality and making mm. sure that people right around the world are are, are listened to, are understood and, and are communicated with in a way that's appropriate for them. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So now let's talk a little bit about artificial intelligence mm-hmm. and you consult in the area of artificial intelligence. From being a great communicator, what got you interested in artificial <laughs> intelligence? Yeah, really good question. Well, look, you know, being an old, old bloke, an old man, mm-hmm. um, I seem, this all seems to be deja vu for me. Um, You know, I was the head of the mobile phone industry association here in Australia when mobile phones were starting to connect to the internet. We were, you know, we're browsing the web on those phones. And there were some issues with with organisations and government with with that that sort of thing um, um, coming into society. I became an academic. I did a lot of work with uh, people like um, the police, the defence force, um, governments looking at um, social media and crisis and emergency situations and also Mm. importantly in reputation. Mm. Um, And I saw there that not thinking about the implications from this technology um, caused a lot of problems for a lot of organisations. So when I started to see AI come in, I, I could see that these regulation issues, the the lack of um, understanding about how they could impact organisations, their reputations, the risks, all of those sort of issues really just, it's not new to me. It, these regulatory issues, these reputation issues, there are some fundamental principles that organizations mm-hmm. need to, to think about. Yeah, look, I mean, you know, generative AI like ChatGPT4, which has just been announced in, yep. the, in the past couple of days, are great. They can co- create some, you know, pretty good content. They can help you um, do some research. You've got to be careful about the accuracy, of course, mm-hmm. at the moment. It can help you to be creative. All those things are great. It can help you to be more efficient. Mm. But I think for organisations, we need to think about the policy implications Correct. of these and the how we can ins- use it to ensure that we're more equitable, that we take into account any biases that we have, mm. um, how we can communicate more empathetically with a a broader group of people rather than using AI as a communication tool that actually marginalizes people and entrenches some of these biases and these inequities that are in the world. And I'm confident that organizations can do this. I'm, I'm not as confident that the AI sector will be good at doing this, which is why I'm a bit ab- advocate of making sure that governments and industry lets that sector know that these are the things that are important to us and we want to make sure that we are living in um, an equitable society. Mm. Put the onus back on the AI industry because, you know, they're not developing AI for the for the good of the world, are they? Mm. I mean, mm. there's a very simple reason that these billionaires are putting their money into AI. It's to make more billions of dollars. That those, so those financial gains are what are driving them. Mm. As consumers, as governments, as as organisations, we need to be putting the pressure back on them and mm. to say, this is what we expect from your services. So to deliver that sort of protection to us, privacy, mm. um, equity, all of those issues that are really important mm. before we implement them in our organisations. Mm. Well said. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm myself a very, very great believer in AI, and I've been experimenting with chat GPD 3.0, 3.5, and last two days 4.0. And it, mm-hmm. it's just absolutely incredible. 
But <clears throat> what I wanted to ask you is that what, in your opinion, are some of the ethical issues uh, that are being yeah. addressed as far as artificial intelligence is concerned? Yeah, I'll, uh, we could have a whole conversation I on agree. these. I mean, look, some some of the some of them uh, include, and look for me, uh, I guess, and and top of mind for me is mm-hmm. in education. Um, you know, students just jumping onto chat GPT and mm-hmm. and creating your essays and not actually learning or reading, getting it to summarize content. I, I think that's a really important issue that we need to address in the education sector. Now, I'm not for an instant saying that we need to ban it. I think, mm-hmm. you know, uh, schools and um, uh education sectors that are banning it, 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 they've missed the point. I think the onus there needs to be to back to academics and and teachers to actually think about content that uses that that sort of service. And then your assessments, your tests, your exams can't be replicated using mm-hmm. chat GPT at the moment. Correct. Back Correct. in the future, they will. Mm-hmm. So that's that's really important. I think, you know, access and equity. I mean, whilst we, we talk about, you know, the power of it and how it can make us more creative, mm-hmm. you know, we've, we've got to remember that there are, there's almost 1 billion people in the world who still don't even have electricity. Absolutely. So there's a really important issue mm-hmm. as well. I mean... Um, equity, who is going to benefit from the implementation of AI? I, I, I read something from uh, the co-founder of um, LinkedIn, who's on the board for um, Microsoft, who wrote a, a book or a PDF document. Um, and he was talking about how AI can, um, you know, increase literacy within um, prisons because he his premise was that a lot of crime is caused because people aren't literate and can't get jobs so out of desperation they create crimes so it seemed to me that he was saying we'll buy my service Absolutely. to help to help the prisoners so i look i think these chat gpt services are going to help the rich get richer um and i think the 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 poor and those that don't have access are going to be there's the potential there for them to be even more marginalized mm, yeah. from this yeah. service I, yeah. I i don't believe for a second that if we leave it the way it's going that it is going to level the playing field mm. there are some people who'd like you to believe that that's going to be the case but it's certainly not. Um, yeah, and look, you know, I, I think in those inbuilt biases, whether it's mm. for sexuality, whether it's for race, whether it's for religion, um, a whole range of other issues, yep. if, if these aren't identified and they're built in and baked into um, the decisions that the governments are making, and there was one government in Europe who I think mainly as a, publicity stunt had a a wall with ai and it was listening to the the citizens in his country on social media and said well based on what the citizens are saying on social media this should be a policy mm. is that equity i mean what about the people who aren't on social Correct. media so the Correct. older demographic the the people who don't have the funds to do it the people who are working so hard yeah. that they don't have time to spend on TikTok mm-hmm. um, on these issues. So, you know, there's a whole range of issues that we really, really need to address. I, I don't want to be pessimistic about no, it. I think, no. you know, I'm a big fan of AI, but I think starting to think about these things now mm-hmm. is going to put society um, in a much better position. And for my focus, it'll put governments and organisations in a better position as well. Thinking about these things up front yeah. is definitely the way Absolutely. to go. Absolutely. Thank you. This was a great response. And and I also believe that exactly what you've said, that while AI is empowering a small section of people, it may also be increasing the divide between the mm. haves and the have-nots when uh, it comes absolutely. to countries which don't have access to this technology. Yeah, that that's exactly right. Mm-hmm. Yes, totally yes. agree. So I have time for one more question, Ross, and this is for the thousands of people who will listen to our conversation. Based on your own amazing journey, uh, you know, from the corporate world to academia, uh, what would you say are three lessons 
you would want our viewers mm. and listeners to take away from your journey and from our conversation? Yeah, look, it's a good, it's a good question. And looking back at mine, it, I, I think some of the opportunities that I've been given are looking. You know, I, I'm privileged person here mm. in Australia. I'm the first to admit that, but there were some really good opportunities that were made available to me. Um, and I, I grasped those. Mm. Um, you know, I mentioned that at the start, you know, um, asking at the newspaper for a job. Yeah. So I think don't, I tell my students, don't wait for somebody to call you and say, mm. Hey, would you like a job in, yeah. you know, um, uh, Qantas, yeah. We're just randomly calling people to see whether they want a job in comms for Qantas. Correct. That yeah. is never going to happen, is it? So yeah. make it happen. Mm. Um, I think that that's really, really important. My, yeah. my second tip is to listen mm. a lot as well. Mm. Yeah. Listening to people, um, listening to what's going on in society, mm. listening to what your friends are saying, um, absorb that, learn from these experiences. And finally, from from my pers personal point of view, um, go out and do things that help people. Mm. It, it it all links in with networking because if you're a good networker, yeah. you help people. It's mm. about had an example two days ago where one of my students worked in uh, Da Nang in Vietnam and somebody in my LinkedIn network reached out to me the day before that and said, you know, I'd love to go back to Vietnam and, and teach there. I was based in Da Nang. Um, if you know anyone that might be able to help me get a job there, mm. what did I do? I didn't, you know, neither of those people knew that I could help, mm. but connecting them on LinkedIn and yeah. say, hey, the two of you have something in common. Mm. Um, why don't you continue the conversation? Oh, so helping people that way. Mm. Um, look, I've got a great student, an Indian student from, well, she's a graduate now, well and mm -hmm. truly graduated, has got a great job. Uh, Pragya Singh mm -hmm. um, came out and and she's done a lot of great work um, advancing gender rights and gender equity as well. Mm -hmm. She puts a lot of time into that mm -hmm. aside from her job. So big shout out to Pragya. I know she'll be watching this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, helping people. And I know that she's got lots of accolades for that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, go out and help That's people. Right. Be a great citizen, be a great person, and you'll be recognized for that. If you're not, you'll get a lot of satisfaction out of it and, you know, you'll have a rewarding life. Amazing. So it's it's a win-win situation, I Absolutely. think. Absolutely. And on that note, Ross, and your three amazing lessons, don't wait <laughs> for someone to call you. Basically, make it happen. Second, you said, listen, and I loved your example of you know, we've got two ears and one mouth and therefore really means listen more than one should speak. And the third one you said was do things that help people. Thank you so much for speaking to me about your journey. Thank you for speaking to me about so many different aspects of communication. I think I've learned a lot of new things about communication from you. Thank you also for speaking to me about artificial intelligence, about uh, <clears throat> some of the misconceptions and some of the ethical issues. Thank you again Thank and good luck. It's been great talking. Thanks, Asatrus. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the brand called You Videocast and Podcast, a platform that brings you knowledge, experience, and wisdom of hundreds of successful individuals from around the world. Do visit our website, www.tbcy.in, to watch and listen to the stories of many more individuals. You can also follow us on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Just search for the brand called you.